Hi everyone, this is Angel with Tech Tutelage, and in this video I'm going to show you how to install Apache Web Server, how to get free SSL certificate for your domains from Let's Encrypt using Apache CertBot plugin, and how to set up virtual hosts so you can serve multiple web applications from the same Apache server. I will be doing this on Ubuntu on Oracle Cloud, but all you need to be able to follow along is Debian-based distribution, connection to the internet with open ports 80 and 443, and registered domain name. The first thing that you want to do is connect to your server and bring it up to date. So I'm going to run apt update and then I'm going to run apt upgrade. Once your server is up to date, you can go ahead and install Apache and you can go ahead and check make sure that the Apache is up and running. Once you confirm that your Apache is installed and it's up and running, at this point, if you have port 80 open, you should be able to access your web server on its public IP. Go ahead, copy it and put it in your web browser. In my case, I'm getting an error here. It says connection refused, which most likely suggests that my port 80 is not open and my computer is not listening on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my IP tables and I'm going to open that port to make sure that my server allows connections on port 80. So I'm going to go to Etsy, IP tables, rules version 4. And in here, I'm going to add two lines. I'm going to copy and paste the one from port 22. And instead of 22, I'm going to say 443, that will be for my HTTPS traffic and 80 for my HTTP traffic. I'm going to go ahead and save. And then I'm going to go ahead and reload the config. Once I've added those rules and reloaded my config, I'm going to go ahead and try to access my server again. And as you can see, now we serve the Apache default page. The next thing that you want to do is go ahead and create your app. In my case, I'm just going to do a simple hello world app and I will put it in my server's root. So if you look at here, this is where your server root is. So I'm going to go ahead and in this path here, I'm going to create a directory for my new application. So I'm going to say make there and I will call my application site one. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an index file for my application. In this index file, I'm just gonna copy and paste here just a basic HTML that it will just give me a title site one. It's gonna say hello world and hello world from site one. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change the permissions on my web application. That way the web server owns that application. I'm gonna go ahead and run this command. Once I have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and create a virtual host for my application by running the following command. And this is what the content of my virtual host will look like. I'm going to copy and paste it so it saves some time. But basically what we're telling here is the document root for our application is here. This will be my server name, my domain name. That will be site1techtutelage.net. And then here I'm given some directives for how to handle the, the directory. And in this last two lines are telling me where to send my logs. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to go ahead and enable that application. So to do that, I'm going to run the following command. Once that's done, I'm going to have to go ahead and restart my Apache server to pick up the changes. Once my Apache server has been restarted, I'm going to go to my DNS registrar. In my case, I'm using Namecheap and I'm going to create a DNS record here for my application. So if you're using a different registrar, you're going to have to follow their procedure. But if you're using Namecheap as me, what all you have to do is go here and click on add new record. And it will be an A record since I'm going to be pointing to an IP address. For host, I'm going to say site one. And for IP address, I'm going to give it my public IP address, which will was again 129.153.11.219. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to paste it. Then I'm going to go ahead and save the changes. And once you have your DNS record added, you can go ahead and try to access it on your web browser. I'm going to say site1.techtotalich.net. And there you go. I'm serving my hello world page from my web server. The next thing that you want to do is go ahead, install that Apache CertBot plugin. And that way we'll be able to get down an SSL certificate, configure our HTTPS virtual host and have our application serve over HTTPS. And that way we'll, we won't be seeing this not secure message here. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my server. I'm going to clear my screen. And in here, to install the plugin, I'm going to run the following command. 
And once you have the plugin installed, you can go ahead and get certificate for your app. Now this plugin will not only go and get certificate for you, but it will also replicate your virtual host file from port 80 and modify it so it serves on port 443. It will also add paths to your certificates and it will make your virtual host on port 80 to do automatic redirect to 443. That's pretty awesome. Only takes few seconds for the plugin to do it. And if you would have to do that manually, it's probably gonna take you like good five to 10 minutes. So all you have to do to get your certificate and all those other things that I just listed is run certbot dash dash patchy. Then you'll be asked for an email address. Then here you're gonna have to agree. So you can do Y and enter. And here I usually say no. And here it asks you uh, which domain names do you want to get certificates for and activate HTTPS. And in our case, we only have one. So all I'm going to have to do is hit enter. But if you have multiple ones here, you can select the one that um, you want to activate HTTPS for and get certificate for. So I'm just going to go ahead and click enter here and it will take a few seconds and it should do everything for you automatically. And there you go, it's all done. So now if I go back to my web browser and refresh this page, it should automatically redirect me to HTTPS and show here a valid certificate. And as you can see, I got redirected to HTTPS and I'm getting a valid certificate. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up a second web application on your server and how to make it so your Apache serves two applications from the same server. So I'm going to go ahead here and go back to Namecheap and I'm going to create another DNS record. Again, it's going to be an A record since I'm going to be pointing to the same IP, but this time I'm going to call it site two. I'm going to do the same IP and then I'm going to go ahead and save the changes. Once you have that done, you can go back to your web server. I'm going to clear the screen. And in the web server, we're going to create a new document root directory for our new site. I'm going to copy and paste here so it's a little bit faster. So we're going to create a directory for site two. And the next thing we're going to do is like we did with the first app is we're going to create an index file. And if you're uploading your own application, you probably know you basically you upload your app in there. We're going to create an index file. And in that index file, we're going to put our HTML code. Again, just basic HTML with a title and a header and some paragraph of text that says hello world from site two. Go ahead and close that and save it. Then as we did with our first web app, we're gonna go ahead and change the permissions. So our web server owns the new application. Then the next step would be to go ahead and create a new virtual host file for our new application. And we're gonna put the exact same directives that we did in our site one, except with the only difference is here is that we're changing where our application is. Instead of site one, we're gonna say site two on these two places. Oh, and here for a server name, our domain name will be sites2.tech.net. So you're gonna go ahead and copy this. You can go ahead and save this. And once you have that all done, you can go ahead and enable your site and then go ahead and restart your Apache. And then we can go ahead to our web browser and give it a try and make sure that it's working. I'm gonna go here, we have our site one. And I'm gonna go here and paste site to and refresh and you can see now we're pointing to the same server here right we have our 129 153 11 229 server we have two dns records one is for site one one is for site two and both of them are pointing to the same server but we are serving two different web applications so we have one that is hello world from site one and the other one is hello world from site two now this one here says not secured and this is because the certificate that we issued earlier only covers for site one tech totally.net. So to secure this application, we're gonna have to issue a new certificate. And to do that, all you have to do is same as the first one, you have to run cert pot dash dash Apache. And that will go ahead. And now it's gonna ask you which application do you wanna activate HTTPS for? And since we already have application number one for site one enabled, we can go ahead and select number two here. And after a few seconds, your certificate should be created and your HTTPS should be activated. And now if I go back to my web browser and refresh my page, and as you can see, my site two application is secured with a valid certificate. Now these certificates are only valid for three months, but the nice thing about this plugin is that it sets automatic renewal for you. So there's a cron job that runs twice a day that will go ahead and renew your certificates when they're due to expire. So to see the cron job, you can go ahead and cat this file.
And as you can see here, we have this job that's going to run twice a day and it will execute this command that will renew all of your certificates that are due to expire. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you liked it, please click on the like button. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe for my channel. Thank you for watching.